I knew I needed a versatile studio mic and I didn't have much to spend on it. So I decided to build a Neumann U87 AI clone. I read online that the Behringer B2 Pro was a good body to start with for a build. It turns out the B2 Pro is not the same microphone everywhere you get it. There's actually two versions and the version I got was not designed as well as the one I had seen online. I had to modify it a lot to fit the parts I ordered. I disassembled its components and saved them for later. The next step was ordering the right components. I used a website called Vintage Microphone PCB Kit. From them, I ordered a set of the DU87M PCBs. These are blue PCBs that are full size, not tapered, and include a place to mount a transformer. I also purchased the switch PCB, switches, and polystyrene capacitors from that website. I also ordered an RK87 capsule for the microphone, as well as a Cinemag CM13113 transformer. I needed to fabricate a new aluminum frame to fit the larger PCBs. I made this a little small because the first tube I used for the mic body was really thick. Then I cut the old frame to make space for the new aluminum rails. I drilled some pilot holes in the frame and used some really small steel screws to tap them. Then I drilled the holes to mount the PCBs to the frame. Here I used a Dremel tool to carve out any metal that would interfere with connections on the back of the PCBs. Right here, I'm using aux guard between steel and aluminum parts. This was highly recommended by Rick Earl, who's a great audio engineer that I consulted with a lot for this build. Now I had to fabricate a tiny mount for the switch PCB, being careful not to block any of the head basket screws. This mount is attached by the same screw that holds the capsule mount to the frame. Then I used a Dremel tool to cut out the switch slots to fit three larger switches that came from vintage mic kit. Next, I wanted to strip the paint from part of the head basket. Then I used a two inch hole saw to make a two x four rig to cut the aluminum tube for the body. I had some help using a CNC router to make an aluminum washer to go on the bottom of the new tube. I sanded the aluminum parts to make them look more uniform. Next, I carefully attached the RK87 capsule to its mount. I noticed the front contact screw was really loose, so I tightened it very lightly. Then I installed the head basket. I then assembled all the parts on the PCBs, but in the end had very low voltage. I consulted with Serrano Audio on Facebook and ultimately took his advice to buy all new PCBs and components. While I was waiting on the new parts, I decided to upgrade the mic body to a brass tube for better radio frequency shielding. Once I got the new parts, it was time to build. I cleaned the switch PCB and soldered on the three switches. I broke apart the main PCBs and cleaned them too. Next, I tested resistors to find two with the most similar resistance. These two are for R18 and R19. Then I put each component in its marked hole and soldered it in place. Something that holds the PCB firmly will help you a lot in this step. Also try to get no clean leaded solder and there's some specific recommendations on forums for which one you should buy. I had to use two 30M resistors instead of the specified 60M resistor, so that's why I'm soldering these two together. Then I trimmed down the connections of the components on the back of the PCBs. I attached the transformer with a zip tie and soldered the leads to the PCB. 
After cleaning the back of the PCBs, I cut some 26 gauge wire to length to connect the boards together. The connection points on the PCBs are letter coded, just connect AA to AA and so on. And you also need a ground wire connecting the two isolation pins. Next, I attach the pad, pattern, and high pass filter connections. I first screwed on the switch PCB and then screwed on the two below it. Here I quickly replaced some capacitors that I had spec'd wrong when I reordered my components. The FET in this microphone needs to be biased in order to live up to its full potential. I have a very basic understanding of this process. I'm just going to show you the method I tried to use on this build. Just a quick disclaimer. First, I attached the mic to a phantom power source. Then I attached an oscilloscope at the FET drain. An oscilloscope within a DAW would also work the same for this process. Then I used a quarter inch cable and alligator clips to inject an audio signal at R6. I played a one kilohertz sine wave in my DAW and then increased the volume until the waveform started to clip on the oscilloscope. Then I slowly adjusted the potentiometer until the clipping looked symmetrical. Here's how much everything cost in the end. To me, 550 is a really good value for this microphone. And if you're skilled enough not to mess up the first set of components, it should only cost you around 450. Finally, I used a sticker cutter to make a vinyl wrap for the brass body. So now it looks like this. And this is what it sounds like going through an Art Pro channel and a Focusrite solo. I'm happy with it, but that's definitely related to how much time I spent on it. Next time, I would start with an empty U87 style body instead of trying to modify a Behringer. I would also consider spending the 700 bucks to get a Serrano Vintage 87 if I could. From what I've learned, this is a really good replica for the price. You can expect a future comparison against the Neumann U87 AI once I get access to one.